In this video, we will discuss a Zener regulator. A Zener regulator is a voltage regulator circuit that provides a nearly constant output voltage to a load using a Zener diode. This is the basic circuit configuration of a Zener regulator. It comprises two resistors, R1, which is the input resistance, and RL, which is the load resistance. A Zener diode is connected in parallel across the load resistor. The output voltage VL is measured across the load resistance and V in is the DC input voltage to the Zener regulator circuit. For the Zener regulator, there are three common cases to discuss. Case one, when the load resistance is varying. Case two, when the input voltage is varying. And case three, when the input resistance is varying. For all these three cases, the Zener diode is able to provide a nearly constant output voltage Vz across the load. So let's discuss these three cases. Recall that a Zener diode is a special type of diode designed to operate in the reverse breakdown region. When a Zener diode is forward biased or on, or reverse bias or off, then the Zener diode behaves like an ordinary diode. When the Zener diode is in reverse breakdown region, it maintains a nearly constant voltage drop Vz across its terminals. Therefore, for analysis, a Zener diode in reverse breakdown is modeled like a DC battery having magnitude Vz and polarity as shown here. There are three important Zener diode parameters. Vz denotes the nominal Zener voltage. Izk is the Zener knee current. It is the minimum current needed to operate the Zener diode in reverse breakdown region. If the current in the Zener diode is less than Izk, then the Zener diode is in reverse bias or off mode. Izm is the maximum safe current through the Zener and this is related to the power dissipation rating of the Zener diode. The circuit theory needed to analyze Zener regulator circuits is actually straightforward and comes from application of Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law to this circuit. First consider Kirchhoff's current law this law states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. Let's apply Kirchhoff's current law to node A as shown here. At this node, we have one current I in entering the node and two currents Iz and Il leaving the node. So therefore this gives I in is equal to Iz plus Il. Next, consider Ohm's law. Consider the general scenario shown here for a resistor R carrying a current I and node voltages Vx and Vy at its terminals. Following passive sign convention, the terminal where the current enters is assumed to be at higher potential and the terminal where the current leaves is assumed to be at lower potential. Therefore, the current flowing through this general resistor R can be related to the voltage drop across the resistor as shown here. So in this first case, I is Vx minus Vy over R. And in this second case, when the direction of the current is reversed, then I is Vy minus Vx over R. Let's apply Ohm's law to resistor RL. We have the current flowing through RL as shown. Voltage at this terminal is Vz and voltage at this terminal is zero volts because this is a ground node. Therefore, applying Ohm's law to resistor RL yields IL is equal to Vz 
over R L. Next, we apply Ohm's law to resistor R1. Voltage at this side of resistor R1 is V in and voltage at this side is Vz because of the Zener diode. So Vl is equal to Vz because of the Zener diode. Therefore, applying Ohm's law to R1 gives voltage at this side. So I in is equal to V in minus Vz over R1. So these three equations which come from circuit theory are needed to analyze Zener regulator circuits. Let us consider the first case Zener regulator with varying load resistance. In this case Zener diode is able to provide a constant output voltage Vz across the load for a range of RL values. From this equation, we can see that when RL is varying, IL depends on RL, so that means IL is varying. From this equation, we can see that I in is independent of RL. Thus, when RL is varying, I in is unchanged. Thus, we, we can make a note that in this circuit, IL current I L is varying, current I in is unchanged, does not vary and as a consequence current I Z is varying. We can find the value of the minimum load resistance as follows. When R L is at its minimum value, since IL is inversely proportional to RL, when RL is at its minimum value, this forces IL to be at its maximum value. From the KCL equation, I in is unchanged and since IL has been forced to its maximum value, therefore to allow Kirchhoff current law to hold, Iz must decrease to its minimum value. That is Iz is forced to be Izk. Using this value of Izk and from this equation we can work out Il max as I in minus Izk and now substituting this Il max in this equation we can work out RL minimum as Vz over IL max. Similarly, we can work out the maximum load resistance as follows. When RL is equal to RL max, that is when RL is at its maximum value, this forces IL to be at its minimum value. Now since I in is unchanged and I L is forced to be at its minimum value, this means I Z must increase to its maximum value which is I Z M. Using this value of I Z M and this KCL equation, I L minimum is given by I in minus I Z M and then substituting in this equation, RL max is given by Vz over IL minimum. So this allows us to work out the minimum and maximum values of the load resistance. This slide shows a solution to a numerical problem related to finding the minimum and maximum load resistances for a Zener regulator circuit. The Zener diode data is provided. This circuit can be solved following the technique discussed earlier. Please pause the video if you wish to study this solution in more detail. Let us consider the second case Zener regulator with varying input voltage. 
In this case, the Zener regulator is able to provide a constant output voltage Vz across the load RL for a range of input voltage values. From this equation, we can see that I in depends on V in. Therefore, when V in is varying, I in is varying. From this equation, we can see that the current IL is independent of V in. Therefore, when V in is varying, IL will still be fixed or unchanged. Thus, we can make a note that for this Zener regulator circuit, current I in is varying, but current IL is fixed or unchanged. Therefore, current IZ is also varying to make sure that Kirchhoff current law is upheld. We can find the value of the voltage V in minimum as follows. When V in is at its minimum value, since I in is proportional to V in, this forces I n to be at its minimum value. Since I L is unchanged, this means that this forces I z to be at its minimum value. Thus I z becomes equal to I z k. Thus we can use this value and this equation to find the value of I in minimum which is equal to I z k plus I l. Then from this equation we can substitute the value of I in minimum and rearrange to find V in minimum which is given by Vz plus I in minimum times R1. Similarly, we can find the value of V in maximum as follows. When the input voltage is at its maximum value, this forces I in to be at its maximum value. And since I L is unchanged, this forces I Z to be at its maximum value. And this value is I Z M. Using this value of I Z M, we can find I in max as I Z M plus I L. And then using this I in max, we can find V in max as V Z plus I in max times R1. So this shows how we can find the minimum and maximum value of the input voltage for which the Zener will regulate the output voltage to be Vz. This slide shows a solution to a numerical problem related to finding the minimum and maximum input voltages that can be regulated by the Zener diode. The Zener diode data is provided. This circuit can be solved following the technique discussed previously. Please pause the video if you wish to study the solution in more detail. Finally, let us consider the last case, Zener regulator with varying input resistance. In this case, the Zener diode is able to provide a constant vo output voltage Vz across the load for a range of R1 values. From this equation, we can see that the current I in depends on R1. Thus, when R1 is varying, I in is varying. From this equation, we can see that the current I L is independent of R1. Thus, when R1 is varying, I1 is still fixed or unchanged. Thus, we can make a note that in this circuit, current I in is varying, whereas current I L is fixed or unchanged. And this causes current I L to vary as well. We can find the value of the minimum R1 resistance as follows. When R1 is at its minimum value, 
since i in is inversely proportional to r1 this forces i in to assume its maximum value and since i l is unchanged this forces i z to be at its maximum value which is equal to i z m thus using this relationship we can find i in max as i z m plus i l and then using this relationship we can find r1 minimum as v in minus v z over i in maximum similarly we can find the maximum value of r1 as follows when r1 is at its maximum value this forces i in to assume its minimum value and since i l is fixed or unchanged this forces i z to assume its minimum value which in this case is equal to i z k thus we can find i in minimum as i z k plus i l and then using this relationship uh, by rearranging it r1 maximum is given by v in minus v z over i n minimum so this shows how we can find the minimum and maximum values of input resistance r1 for which this circuit will provide regulation this slide shows a solution to a numerical problem related to finding the minimum and maximum input resistances for which the zener diode will maintain regula regulation the zener diode data is provided this circuit can be solved following the technique discussed earlier please pause the video if you wish to study this solution in more detail thank you for uh, watching this video about zener regulation and the three common cases concerning zener regulation